Uh, thank you for the beautiful introduction. Um, well, you know, it's the wanting to do things that makes them happen. My grandmother, she used to say, Rosie, it's not good looks or natural gifts that really count. Lucky for you, child. <laughs> I believe anyone can do anything if they've got the reason to do it or reasons to do it. And tonight, it's, I dedicate this little talk to Hope and Homes for Children and wearing the T-shirt with pride because my mother gave, bravely gave birth to me, even though she was dying of TB. And then I had so much love, I was given to the postman, which has to be a good start to a traveler. <laughs> and the postman eventually gave me to his wife, who saved my life by saving my health. And then I was given to my grandmother, who couldn't walk, but she said, don't worry about your past. Your past can help you if you think about it in a different way. It's how you respond to things that makes all the difference. And well, uh, we were poor in Ireland. She was bedridden and only had two pairs of shoes every five years. But she encouraged me to just make do with things. And she, I rode the family cow to the horse show and got a prize for best turned out. And thanks to her teaching me that nothing is impossible if you care deeply about it, I had the most blessed, lucky chance to sail around Cape Horn with my family, and my son was born at sea with only the emergency childbirth pages of Reed's Nautical Almanac. <laughs> but the absolute truth is that they're really, it's the wanting to and having the reason to do things. And on, when I was at sea, I used to look up at the sky and I remember that if every human being, one friend said, has got the whole strength, the, the width of the sky to do anything you want. But then things went fairly wrong after I sailed around the world. I, lots of things happened, you know, went so good, up and down in life. And then I decided to sail across the Atlantic by myself to give a thank you for my life and for my lovely family and for my son and daughter who are the light of my life. And so I found a boat in a cow shed in Dolgefli and bought it for 500 pounds and it was brought to the boatyard in Wales and nobody would sponsor me so I had to be sell, I had to pose on the, on the cover of a very rude gentleman's magazine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one thing led to the other and uh, I met Clive who was fantastic and had adventures with wolves and bears and my biggest adventure which I never expected to have because Clive and I were a love story we were married for 20 years with all sorts of plans and dreams but what happened was that he suddenly got a pain and it turned out he had prostate cancer which had spread to the bone. And so I thought, what can I do? I just started running. I'd been a very poor runner all my life, backward in everything. And I didn't start till I was 50. So I looked at the map of the world and I thought, I can run around the world. And I could use the tips I learned at sea by making do with buckwheat, eating all sorts of strange things, and it can be self-supporting. And I just got a bivouac to start with, and I was going to run from my own front doorstep 20,000 miles, which eventually took five years, through, from all the way from my doorstep to Harwich, across the English Channel, and the next sea was the Bering Sea, after running across Holland and Germany, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Riga to Moscow, East Siberia, across to Alaska, etc. But meanwhile, this was the first part of the road to Russia, where I met amazing people, including a I heard a sound in the night, and a man jumped out of the trees, waving an axe. And he ran straight at me, and well, managed to escape from him. He turned out to be an admirer in the end. And I also met the people that no one else ever had ever met. They said, this is a teacher. And she said, you never have to give, never have to give up inner freedom. You can do anything if you really have to. She hadn't been paid for three years, and she'd walked a thousand miles to collect paper bags so she could sell her fruit and stuff they grew. And it was minus 62 Celsius at some stages. There was times I couldn't move uh, all winter except for a few yards a day. I ran out of food five times. And I used to 
find that it wasn't my strength. There is nothing special about me, except that there's something special about everybody, isn't there? And I used to just think of the family. I used strength that wasn't my own in order to survive. I thought of the beautiful people I met on the way, and I thought of my family, and they gave me the strength to do it. And also the people I met along the way, like these children who had never seen a road, and many of them were orphans who had lost their parents in 100 mile an hour gales that can happen in Alaska. And so I was very proud that I could do this and continue, and eventually I was, oh, well, that was a bad deal because I got frostbite and I hoped I could walk 60 miles to the next village. But then there was a blizzard and the bled burst and reindeer hairs got in it and I had run out of food and it wasn't a pretty sight at all. But I'm going to make a lot of money by selling this to Weight Watchers. <laughs> and then eventually, after many, many other adventures, I, five years, it's hard to pick what to tell you tonight, I managed to get a job as a taxi in New York on the way home. <laughs> And uh, this just was absolutely fantastic after 1,789 days and many, many other adventures and far better painted toenails and survived the frostbite. I actually managed to do the Chicago Marathon as an extra. And <laughs> then I arrived home after five years and saw the second, my brother drew the second footprint on my flagstone. And I made it. And I thought that was it, and I realized what had kept me going, ladies and gentlemen, is not great trying to test my limits or just determination. It was love. I think love does make the world go round, and love is the highest form of determination. And I believe you can do anything if you put your heart into it and care about it. And so I had a great time running across Death Valley and across America, trying to do cancer awareness and say that life is precious for everyone. And then, doing the laundry last year, which was very dangerous, I actually broke my hip really badly. And the doctor said I would never, never run again, never walk again, limp with a stick. And so, my family believed in me, and you can do anything if people believe in you. So what I've decided is that, well, actually, I'm wearing these brand new shoes, which were brought tonight by a kind friend, and uh, I'm going to run around the world again, because now I'm 72, and it's just the beginning. So, I would like to tell you, you can do anything, anything, anything. I love you all, and I will tell you, what you need to do is go wild and crazy. <laughs> I, I just have to add that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're going to get the old tent out and you've done, got, done camping since a child, one night under the stars will give you strength to do everything else in your life, or those who are planning expeditions. Do the next step. Take another step. And even an eighth of a step. Just go forward, and life is precious. And I'm now only, you know, 72 going on 27. Thank you! Yeah.